Hello, good evening. Thank you for being on time. Uh, we are about to start. Thank you for being here, Maximo, Wendy, Jose Moises, Rina, Guadalupe, uh, Rosemary, Isamar, Nacy, and Gabriela Maritza. Okay. Now we have presentations, right? Yesterday we had a conversation and today uh, we have presentations about landmarks. So if you brought your presentation about landmarks or any place that you want to describe using the passive voice, we are going to check it today. Also, if you have any a question about the platform, any doubt about um, the exercises, let me know, okay? see here so before uh beginning we are going to check the conversation yesterday's conversation and also the vocabulary right so we finished with this yesterday and we are going to just check some some vocabulary that we were able to to see or study yesterday so let me see here this will be the vocabulary for example, speak, right? We can speak languages and dialects. Do you know what the difference is? What is the difference between a language and a dialect? What is the difference? ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre un lenguaje y un dialecto? I don't know, teacher, but I think the language is um, talking uh, in a country or is the language that people in country talk. But dialects are only for a small region inside a country. Very and good. And all the people know. Exactly. Very good, Gabriela. Very good. So that's correct. And languages can be like French, English, Spanish, and dialect is like smaller, right? For example, we can have different dialects from one language, right? Perfect. Another vocabulary, fine. We can find in a country handicrafts and souvenirs. What is a handicraft? What is that? A handicraft. Uh, teacher. Yes. I, I think handicraft is something made by the hands. Exactly. It's something made with our hands, right? And as you can see in the picture, there are a lot of things, right? Like handicrafts. Like, como, how do you say in Spanish, like Mercado de? Ex cuartel de artesanías. Yes, de artesanías, exactly. So handicrafts son como artesanías, right? Artesanías, manualidades, perfect, thank you. That is a handicraft. And souvenirs. Souvenirs is kind of different, right? Because we can have different things. It can be a handicraft, can be a souvenir but also uh, different things, right, that are not handicrafts. What is a souvenir in Spanish? Como un recuerdo. Un recuerdo, exactly. So, for example, if I go to Mexico and I bring a sombrero, for example, that can be a souvenir, right, a souvenir, or any other handicraft, perfect. Now, a manufacturer, what is the meaning of manufacture. What does it mean? Manufacture. Uh, 
are the things that we uh, or are built in a factory, right? In a factory. Es fabricar, right? Fabricar, manufacture. So many things are manufactured, for example, electronics. And we can see different electronic devices there, like refrigerator, TV, um, a laundry machine, fans, air conditioners, ACs, right? We have a lot of uh, things. And textiles, textiles, right? In, in Spanish, it's textiles, but in English, it's textiles, textiles. Let's see. The next one. Raise. What is the meaning of raise? We checked that word yesterday, right? Derivados. No. Crianza, como criados. Como criar, exactly. Raise. We can raise cattle and we can raise sheep. Cattle. What is the meaning of cattle? Ganado. Ganado, exactly. We can see the picture there, right? A lot of cows. That is cattle and sheep, ovejas, right? Sheep. It's not cheap, it's sheep, right? Let's see the next one. Grow. We can grow wheat and soybeans. What is wheat? You can see it in the picture. What is that? Trigo, I think. Trigo, right? We have wheat. We had wheat grains. And we have wheat flour. Harina de trigo, right? Wheat flour. And we have soybeans, right? Soybeans. Uh, sería como frijol de soya, ¿verdad? Soybeans. O soya. Solamente soya. O sojas, ¿verdad? That is soybeans. Let's see, that would be it, right, I guess. And we were checking yesterday that we'll make it bigger. Yesterday we were talking about the passive without by, simple present. This is the simple present, as you can see, right? We can have the passive with simple present also. Sometimes we use the passive voice because we don't know or do not want to express who performs the action. This is something that we studied yesterday. The passive voice is often used in formal text. And we have some examples, right? The peso is used in Dominican Republic. Chocolate exp is exported from Germany. Portuguese is spoken in Brazil and Portugal. So all of these, the red parts are passive, right? And the doer of the action is not mentioned there. So that is uh, the passive voice without the doer of the action, without, without by, right? If we want to, or if we know the doer of the action, we can add it. But in these examples, we don't have it. It's not needed. And we have passive without by, active voice, and passive voice. Over there, you, you will see the like the formula, right? Subject in black, verb, object, and a place, right? That is That would be like a complement, right? We don't have the doer. And all of these are in active voice. Um, we just have the subject, right? Verb, object, and place. We need to have an object, as you remember, we need to have an object to create the passive voice. Uh, let's see, Jeffrey, can you read the sentences, please? People in active grow, voice. Okay. People grow bananas in Colombia. We use the dollar in the United States. People raise chickens in Cuba. Tourists buy a lot of tequila in Mexico. Very good. Tourists buy a lot of tequila in Mexico. Perfect. So all of these are active, right? Not passive, active voice. People grow bananas in Colombia. We use the dollar in the United States. People raise chickens in Cuba. Tourists buy a lot of tequila in Mexico. We can um, create the, uh, the passive voice. We have the examples below. And this is the formula, right? The object plus the verb to be plus the past participle and the place, right? 
the complement. Here it is, the verb to be. The verb to be is in green, and as you can see, is in present because the active voice was in present. Before, it was in past because the active voice was in past. Let's, let's see, Rina, can you read the sentence in passive voice, please? Okay. Bananas are grown in Colombia. Colombia. The dollar is used in the United States. Chickens are raised in Cuba, Cuba. A lot of tequila is bought in Mexico, Mexico. Mexico, very good, perfect. As you can see here, we have the subject, but over here in the passive voice, we don't have it anymore because it's not important, because we don't want to mention it, or probably because we don't know. But bananas are grown in Colombia, it's okay by people, right? If we want to add it, we can say by people. And we also use the past participle. The past participle doesn't disappear. The dollar is used, chickens are raised, and a lot of tequila is bought. Very good. That is a review that from yesterday's class. And this is the homework. Let's see. Um, let me see here. What else do we have here before the homework? Some exercises. Yes, we're going to create them. We're going to check the homework. Who did the homework? Quien hizo la tarea? Just to check, to practice the English. Who investigated about a landmark? I did. Me too. Okay, very good. So, Jose, you can begin if you want to. If you brought pictures, I think that you can share the screen, but let me see if you're able to. Um, okay. Now you can share the screen if you brought pictures, okay? If you don't brought, if you didn't bring pictures, that's okay. Uh, I don't include pictures, only I wrote uh, my homework, but, oh. but I have a problem with a video. Okay, perfect. So you can share the video if you want to. Wait, wait. Uh, okay. Maybe, uh, just I can read it? If you want to, you can read it. No problem. Okay, okay. Uh, Landmark of Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. Theater of Santa Ana is one of the most popular landmarks of Santa Ana City in El Salvador. It was built in 1902 by one Italian engineer and was designed by two architects. His construction was finalized in 1910. All the paintings, paintings were made by Italian artists and also the the, how's the pronunciation of statue? Statue. Also, the statues were made by Italians. When civil war was ending, and finally in 1992 over, theater began his reconstruction. Okay, very good. Very good, perfect. So you were talking about theater of Santa Ana, right? Very good. Let's see. Um, Jeffrey, when was the theater built? When was it built? Um, I can't hear. Uh, you can hear, very good, no problem. It was built in 1902, right? From Italian, an Italian engineer. Perfect. So uh, have you visited, Jose Moises, have you visited the, the theater? Are you from Santa Ana? Uh, yes, of course. I live in Santa Ana. Okay. And you mentioned that in 1992, it began the reconstruction. So it was kind of destroyed. Uh, yes, not for war, but the, uh, in, in one time 
the theater was used like a, a cinema. Oh, yes. And the people uh, destroyed the, the theater. Ah, okay. So they were, it was used like a movie theater to watch movies. Yes, yes. Okay, very good. Very interesting. Very good. Perfect. You use a lot of the passive voice correctly. So congratulations. Let's see another volunteer, please. Me, teacher. Okay, Arena, go ahead. Can you see my, my yes. presentation? Yes, we can see it. Okay. House of Alejandro Cotto. Mm -hmm. Located in Suchitoto, Cuscarlán, El Salvador. Alejandro Cotto was a very important person for Suchitoto. He helped for the artistic development of the town and the country. The house was visited by the Queen of England, and the house was built, built in 1525 by the Spanish. When the owner, Alejandro Cotto, died, the house became a museum that is visited by many tourists nowadays. Okay, very good, perfect. You once visited by the Queen of England, right? And very good, perfect. Have you visited the house? Yes, okay. that's that one is is me. <laughs> yes, I okay, can see. House. That is the house, the one behind. Yeah, and you can see the lake, uh, from the backyard of the house. You can see Suchitlan. Suchitlan Lake. Okay, very good. So it should be very beautiful, right? Probably one day we will be able to go there. Perfect. Yeah. Very good presentation with pictures and everything. Thank you. Very, very good, Rina. Um, let's see, another volunteer? Alguien más? Somebody else that wants to read or present another landmark? Sonia, go ahead, Sonia. Hello. Okay, hello, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the landmarks is Los Cobanos. Mm -hmm. It's located in the trunk that bear the same name. It is about 11 kilometers from the part, part of Acajutla in the department of Sonsonate in the west of the country. In the year 28, the beach Los Cobanos was declared the protect area for its biodiversity. And it is considered one of the most beautiful beach because the color of it is sun is yellow. This is due to a mixture of volcanic rocks and coral reefs that sweep the states be, be current to the short. Only, only that. Okay, very good, Sonia. Let's see, so you were uh, talking about Los Covenos, right? Located yes. in, near in Sonsonate, Sonsonate right? Very yes. good. Uh, is that your favorite beach? Yes. It's yes, <laughs> yes, it's really good, right? Mm -hmm. And also the sunsets are really good. Perfect, very Thanks. good. Another volunteer, please. Otro voluntario. Rosemary, okay, go ahead, Rosemary. Uh, a landmark, Cerro Verde. Mm -hmm. The Cerro Verde was created in 1955 and was founded by Mr. Raul Contreras, who um, has always been one on the most iconic place in El Salvador. Okay, that's it, right? Have you visited El Cerro Verde, Rosemary? Yes. Okay, it's have beautiful. you have you climbed it? 
Have you climbed it? Lealo escaló. And yes. Yes, right, right. Okay, very good. Perfect. Are you from? I, I, do you live near Cerro Verde or do you live in San Salvador? Uh, living in Armenia, San Salvador. Okay, very good. Yes, kind of, kind of, dear, kind of. Very good. Perfect. Perfect, Rosemary. Let's see another volunteer. Somebody else? Jeffrey, okay, go ahead, Jeffrey. Okay, um, I made my homework about a place that I would like to visit into the future. Mm -hmm. That place is Central Park, we catered in New York. I investigated and was opened in 1858 and was designed by Obstein and Baux. Okay, and that's the information that you investigated, right? Yes. Okay, very good. Why do you want to visit Central Park? I don't know. Maybe the movies and series um, show me that place is nice. Okay, very good. Are you planning to go to New York in the near future or probably in some years? Some years. In some years. Perfect. Very good. Hopefully you will take a lot of pictures there. Let's see, uh, somebody else? Alguien más? Somebody else that wants to talk about a landmark that you have visited or you want to visit, like Jeffrey, right? Nacy, go ahead, Nacy. Hello? Macy, are you there? Yes, <laughs> okay. Now, can you, uh, are you going to present the, the landmark or? I have problems with my mic. Okay, no problem. I didn't know if somebody else uh, is able to speak uh, or is able to present the, the landmark, the homework. Alguien más quiere participar? Gabriela Maritza, okay. Marisa. Uh, I made my homework about uh, Galapagos Island. Mm -hmm. uh, the islands are often called the Enchanted Isles. Uh, the, uh, the National Park in the island was established in 19. 60s to protect the landscape and its ecosystems. The water surrounding the island was declared a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve and is the home of many species. Okay, perfect. And that's something that you would like to visit, the Galapagos Islands? I have the opportunity to visit because of my work. And oh, really? it's a really amazing place. Okay, do you have did you take pictures and everything? Yes, yes, I, I have the opportunity to go uh, to stay three weeks in Ecuador and have the opportunity to visit many places there and the mitad del mundo and a lot of beaches there and it's nice. Okay, yeah, that is the, the in the middle of the like the, the planet, right? In Ecuador, right? right? Yes. Okay, that's exciting. Very good, very good, Gabriela. Very good, perfect. Let's see, somebody else, alguien más. Somebody else who wants to talk about landmarks? Raise your hands. Nobody, okay. Okay, so we are going to uh, continue, but first of all, we are going to check some vocabulary that I was able to listen, right? You did it very well, actually. Um, you mentioned a lot of words. You mentioned passive voice. That's good. But you also, let's see. 
we're going to check here some words like were kind of difficult to pronounce the pronunciation or pronunciate. For example, how do you say estatua in English? How do you say it? Statue. Statue, right? Statue. So you had a lot of statues, right? Statues or statues. Very good. Perfect. Let, let's see also the years, right? I guess that most of you pronounce very well the years. So remember that if it is 1910, 1922, 1985. So it's in first the first two and then the other two, right? Remember that. Perfect. Let's see another one. Um, oh, yes. What is the past participle of build? What is the past participle? Build? Exactly, build, exactly. That is the past participle. Actually, that is the past also. So it's build and built. perfect. Let's see another one. Oh, um, regular verbs are really easy to write, right? Uh, they are easy to remember because we just need to add ed at the end, but they are really difficult to pronounce. The pronunciation is really difficult. So for example, what is the past of help? What is the past? or past participle? Helped. Exactly, helped, exactly. It's not help it or help it, right? It's helped. Uh, regular verbs, they have three pronunciations. Probably I will be able to bring something so you can see the three different pronunciations, buddy. Um, they are easy to remember, but it's hard to remember the pronunciation. Uh, let's see another one. Construction, paintings, engineering. Teacher, can you repeat help and help? Yeah, help is like with P right at the end. Help, help. help. And oh. the pass is with a, a little T. Helped. Helped. Helped, exactly. Help. Now, this one is uh, kind of difficult also biodiversidad how do you say that in english biodiversidad how do you say that this word i think is biodiversity biodiversity exactly biodiversity bio from biology, right? And diversity, biodiversity. Very good, perfect. Let's see, I think I have another one here. Um, Cerro Verde, Landmark, always. Ah, yes. So this one is kind of, um, kind of tricky, right? How do you pronounce the first word, this one. How do you Iceland. pronounce it? Iceland. Iceland. And in Spanish, Iceland. what is Iceland? What is Iceland in Spanish? Islandia. Islandia, exactly. And the second one? Island. Island. Island, exactly. The S is not pronounced, this S, right? Island. Island, exactly. So Iceland, if I say the Iceland, Yes, Islandia, right? I'm talking okay. about Islandia, Iceland. And if I'm talking about island or islands, it's Islas, right? Islas. Yes, kind of tricky, but we are learning. That's normal, no problem. And the last one, this is kind of difficult also, right? Species, right? Species, species, right? Species. But uh, you did it. You did a great job, actually. You uh, talk about 
different landmarks with the passive voice. That was the objective of this homework. Perfect. Now we are going to uh, finish with um, the passive voice because we don't have that much. Also, we have uh, listening here. So we are going to listen to it. And then we are going to continue with the next topic. I'm just checking here if we have any role play. But no, it's just pronunciation. Okay, so we are going to finish with these exercises. It says, are you able to read the table? Pueden leer ahí? Are you able to? It says, change yes. these sentences into passive. Sentences with by. Take turns reading them aloud. Cambia las oraciones a forma pasiva con by. Luego lee las oraciones para todos en la clase. So that's what we are going to do. Um, number one. Let's see, Jeffrey, can you read number one, please? Frederick. Frederick Bart, Bart, Bartoldi mm -hmm. designed the state, statue? State of the, the statue of liberty. <laughs> you were you were, you went to yeah i thought okay she wants to participate okay no problems yeah but it's correct frederick bartholdi designed the statue of liberty in 1884 exactly is that act, that's active voice right active so how can we change that into passive ¿Cómo la cambiamos a la voz pasiva? Somebody knows? Teacher? Yes. yes. Can I? Yes, go ahead. Yes. The Statue of Liberty was designed by Frederick Bartoldi in 1884. Very good. Perfect, Maximo. Very good. The Statue of Liberty was designed by Frederick Bartoldi in 1884. If we don't want to mention Frederick Bartoli, right, we can say the Statue of Liberty was designed in 1884. That's okay, perfect, but that's okay, very good. Per Maximo, can you read number two, please? The passive, the, I'm sorry, the active. Mary Curie discovered red in 1898. Exactly. Mary Curie discovered radium in 1898. What will be the passive voice for that sentence? ¿Cuál es la voz pasiva para la número dos? ¿Alguien sabe? Somebody knows? Radium was discovered by in, in 1898 by Mary Curie. Very good. Radium was discovered in 19, I'm sorry, 1898 by Mary Curry. Very good. Perfect. Number three, um, Gabriela, can you read number three, please? Uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote 100 Years of Solitude. So, uh, esa palabra me cuesta. Solitude. Solitude, uh -huh. Solitude. in 1971. Exactly. Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote 100 Years of Solitude in 1971. Um, somebody knows like the passive of this yeah, sentence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would be the passive? Yeah. What was uh, written? 100 Years of Solitude was 100 years of solitude was word written written sorry teacher written no. uh, in night 19 mm -hmm. 71 mm -hmm. by gabriel garcia marquez perfect very good perfect 100 years of solitude was written in 1971 by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. 
Rina, read number four, please. I think this is a name from the Chinese people, right? Yes. Wu Pei produced produce the first digital HDTV high definition television in 1991. Exactly. Wu Pei produced the first digital HDTV high definition television in 1991. How can we create a passive? Who knows? What was produced? What was produced? The first digital HDTV was produced in 1991 by Hupake. Very good. The first digital HDTV was produced in 1891 by Wu Pike. Very good. Jeffrey, read the last one, please. Salma Hayek played Frida Kahlo in the movie Frida in 2002. Very good. Salma Hayek played Frida Kahlo in the movie Frida in 2002 or 2002. Very good. What would be the passive? What is la voz pasiva? Passive voice is in two, two, sorry. Go ahead. In two thousand two, mm -hmm. uh, Frida Kahlo. Oh no, sorry. Let me <laughs> order my mind. <laughs> okay. okay. In two thousand two, mm -hmm. Frida Kahlo was played in the movie Frida. By Salma Hayek. Very good, perfect. In 2002, Frida Kahlo was played in the movie Frida by Salma Hayek. Can we place the year at the beginning? Yes, we can play it. We can place it there. Uh, we just need to write a comma, right? In 2002, comma, uh, Frida Kahlo was played by Salma Hayek or Frida Kahlo was played in the movie Frida by Salma Hayek. Perfect. Perfect. This is another one, but I guess that we already practice the passive voice. Do you want to do this exercise or do you think that is enough with passive voice? ¿Quieren hacer este o ya sienten que ya manejan bien la voz pasiva? It is up to you. Do you want to do this exercise or we can, because this is, this is the, the same, right? Frederick Bartoli designed the Statue of Liberty. This is the, these are the answers, right? By, by the ones that you said, right? Frida Kahlo was played by Salma Hayek in the movie Frida in 2002. These are the results. Uh, so this one is another one. Do you want to do this? Or if you want to, we can continue with the following exercise. Yes, I want to do. Yes? Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's do this exercise because I don't know what Sistine, Sistine, the number three, the sentence number three. Okay, perfect. Now, let's read number one. What we have to do here, sorry, because some, do some dogs are barking. One moment, please. Okay, so what we have to do is just to choose the um, verbs right here, discover, destroy, invent, paint, and write. And we need to complete the sentences with these verbs. Read number one, please. Romeo and Juliet mm -hmm. was, uh, was writing by Shakespeare. Romeo and Juliet was written by Shakespeare. Written. Okay, let's see.
Very good, perfect. Romeo and Juliet was written by Shakespeare. That's correct. Let's see. Uh, teacher, number... yes. I have a question. Yes. Why in in this case we use written and no uh, wrote? Oh, do you remember the the formula? Passive voice. It says object be and past participle. What is the past participle of write? What is the pasado participio de escribir? Wrote. That is the past. Written. 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 Yes, exactly. If you go to a dictionary, for example, and if you or in an English book, and if you look the past participles, for example, uh, you will see the present, the past, and the past participle. For example, there are some that is the same, right? Bet, bet, and bet. But for, for example, there are others like begin, begun, and begun, right? They change. They are irregular verbs, so, but we use the past participles. Regular verbs, we just add the ed, or a los regulares solo le agregamos el ed, pero los irregulares cambian, y por eso nos tenemos que memorizar. El de write es write, wrote, and written. So the past participle is written. Very good question. So remember to use this uh, formula, past participles, right? Only past participles. Let's read number two. Okay, uh, let's see, Jose, read number two, please. San Francisco was destroyed by an earthquake in 1906. Very good. San Francisco was destroyed right by an earthquake in 1906. 1906, perfect. Now uh, we have earthquakes all over the world, right? Hopefully here is not going to happen anything. Let's see number three, uh, Melissa. Um, sorry. The Sixteen Chapel um, was painted by my Michelangelo. Very good. The Sixteen Chapel was painted by Michelangelo. Perfect. Patricia Rodriguez, number four. The Mona Lisa was painted. Painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Yes, was painted, right? Yeah, the Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Perfect. Number five, let's see, Maximo. The light bulb was invented by Edison. Very good. The light bulb was invented by Edison. What is the light bulb? Foco. Foco, exactly, very good, perfect. And the last Daniela. one. Let's see, Nacy. Number six, please. Nacy, you have problems with the mic, right? With the microphone. Okay, let's see someone else. Uh, Wendy, number six, please. <laughs> Wendy, what happened? Can you speak? Wendy, okay, Nancy, can you speak right now? <laughs> okay, yes, I can hear you now. Number six, please. The law of gravity was discovered by Newton. Very good. The law of gravity was discovered by Newton. 
So we are going to see the responses right now. Let's let's see. The ones that you said. So Romeo and Juliet was written by Shakespeare. San Francisco was destroyed by an earthquake in, in 1906. The Sixteenth Chapel was painted by Michelangelo. The Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. The light bulb was invented by Edison. And the law of gravity was discovered by Newton. You see the verb to be is in past because the active voice is in past. And we always use the, uh, past, par the past participles, right? Next to the verb to be. If we follow the formula, that's the way that it's going to be. You won't have any problem. These are other ones, but I think that we are going to move on because I want you to, to check the, a listening. As you can see here, it's the same, right? For example, the moons of Jupiter were first seen by Galileo. Everest was climbed. Climbed is the past participle of climb, right? That, that is a regular verb by Sir Edmund Hillary. JFK was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald. The pyramids were built by the pharaohs. Pharaohs is pharaones, right? The pyramids were built, fueron construidas. The Eiffel Tower was built in the 19th century and the Sphinx nose was shot by Napoleon. Shot, okay? So all of, it's the same, right? All of these are past participles. Now we are going to um, have a listening practice. That's what I want to check because we are going to listen about these landmarks, the Taj Mahal, the Palace of Versailles and La Sagrada Familia. So we are going to um, answer these questions. Why was it built? What do the changing colors of the building represent? So I need you to listen first, uh, Taj Mahal, and then we're going to check why was it built, right? And what is the meaning of the colors? Then number two, the questions are, what, what did King Louis XIV want the Half of Mirrors to show? What problem did the candles cause? How did the mirrors help? And the last one, the last part, of the listening is La Sagrada Familia, right? What did the architect think about man-made structures versus nature? Why are no straight lines used? So right now uh, we are going to listen it. And if you want to, you can take notes. Si quieren pueden tomar notas. Unit 11, it's really worth seeing. Can you listen to it? Yes. Yes. Yes, okay, perfect. So let me look for that part. It is here, okay. Page 74, exercise six, listening. Man-made wonders of the world. Part A. Listen to three tour guides describe some famous monuments. Take notes to answer the questions below. Then compare with a partner. 1. Taj Mahal. Why was it built? What do the changing colors of the building represent? What would you do for love? Would you take 17 years to build a place to remember someone? That's what Emperor Shah Jahan did when he built the Taj Mahal. This incredible building was designed for his wife when she died. She was his third wife, but also his favorite. The colors of the building change with the time of day, and they say that the different colors represent the different moods of women. So, ladies, you can change your mood three times a day, and it's accepted. <laughs> Now, this was built almost 400 years ago, before modern construction equipment. So think about all the work that went into building this. 
more than 1,000 elephants were used to transport materials and around 20,000 people were hired to build the Taj Mahal. Now, if we walk closer, you'll see... 2. Palace of Versailles What did King Louis XIV want the Hall of Mirrors to show? What problem did the candles cause? How did the mirrors help? Now we come to the Hall of Mirrors, one of the most famous rooms in the Palace of Versailles. King Louis XIV wanted this room to show all the riches and power of France. The paintings on the wall, the beautiful detail of the room, the gardens outside. They were all made more visible with the mirrors. But electricity didn't exist in those days, so candles were used. Any idea what problems the candles caused? Anyone? Candles make smoke? That's right. Candles make smoke, and smoke can damage paintings. The mirrors reflected the light of the candles, so they didn't have to use as many. Fewer candles meant less smoke and less smoke damage to the room. Pretty smart, right? Now let's go see some of the 350 rooms and apartments for visitors. 3. La Sagrada Familia What did the architect think about man-made structures versus nature? Why are no straight lines used? Folks, I am so excited today to show you La Sagrada Familia. Construction on this church started in 1882, and over 130 years later, it's still not finished. The architect, Antony Gaudi, felt very strongly that architecture should reflect nature, and you can see this in his buildings. For example, you may notice that hill over there, La Sagrada Familia, is exactly one meter shorter because Gaudi believed that no man-made structure should be taller than its natural surroundings. And notice the curves of the church. This is another example of how Gaudi copied nature. He said, if straight lines don't exist in nature, they shouldn't exist in architecture either. Okay. Let me see here. Do you want do you have the answers or do you want me to to play it again? Do you have the answers for the listening? Yes, we got the answers. Okay, perfect. So let's see. Taj Mahal, why was it built? Why was it built, the Taj Mahal? For his wife. He is for... For his wife. His wife. Exactly, for his wife. What the number... Wife. Yes, wife. he had different wives, right? Uh, she was number three, right? It was her, his third wife, but it was his favorite. That's what it says. And what do the changing colors of building represent? The different moods of, moods of the woman. Of woman. Very good. The different moods of women, right? Very good. How it changes during the day. Let's see Palace of Versailles. What did King Louis XIV want the Hall of Mirrors to show? The garden. The garden? The power and the reach of France. Okay, let's see. We have two, two responses. Let's see. She was his third wife in this. More than 1,000 elephants were used to trans... Two, Palace of Versailles. What did King Louis XIV want the Hall of Mirrors to show? What problem did the candles cause? How did the mirrors help? Now we come to the Hall of Mirrors, one of the most famous rooms in the Palace of Versailles. King Louis XIV wanted this room to show all the riches and power of France. Very good. Wanted to show all the riches and power of France, oh, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And what problem did the candles cause? The, the candles smoke. The smoke and it damaged the pictures. 
exactly smoked and the smoke damages the, uh, the pictures. Yeah, exactly. How did the mirrors help? The mirrors reflecting the solar light. Very good. The mirrors reflected the light, right? Very good. Perfect. The last one, La Sagrada Familia. What did the architect think about man-made structures versus nature? What did the architect think about man-made structures versus nature? Who has that answer? He think the structure has to reflect the nature around. So very good. The structures have to reflect the nature, right? Very good. Um, why are no straight lines used? Because there are no straight lines in the nature. In the nature, nature. Nature. So, uh huh. So they can be straight lines in the structure. Exactly. That's that's uh, very logical, right? There are no straight lines in nature. That's why he liked like to do this kind of structures. Construction on this church started in 1882, and over 130 years later, it's still not finished. The architect, Antony Gaudí, felt very strongly that architecture should reflect nature, and you can see this in his buildings. For example, you may notice that hill over there, La Sagrada Familia is exactly one meter shorter because Gaudí believed that no man-made structure should be taller than its natural surroundings. And notice the curves of the church. This is another example of how Gaudí copied nature. He said... Okay, perfect. That's correct. Very good. So your listening is really good, actually. You see, it's really good. You got all of the answers. Let's see what else do we have here. I think that is almost time, right? So tomorrow, uh, this is what I want you to investigate, okay? Because we're going to finish, just to remind you about, uh, we're going to finish with the passive voice this time, uh, we will. And I want you to investigate the following list of things. Try to use the passive voice also. Um, name three books that were made into movies. For example, uh, three books that were made into movies are The Hunger Games, Harry Potter, and The Lord of the Rings. So I want you to investigate different things that were that happened in the past, like things that were invented in the last 50 years, series that were popular last year, sport played in your high school, things that were produced in your country, languages that were spoken, movies that were nominated, nominated for the Oscar this year, or famous people who, who were born in the USA. Do I need to investigate all of it? Todo eso voy a investigar, teacher? No, verdad, solo una. Solo una de esas va a escoger, only one. Just, por ejemplo, yo, I want to investigate about movies that were nominate, nominated for the Oscars this year. So I will investigate that. And I will I will answer it with the passive voice, okay? For example, the movies that were nominated for the Oscar this year are this one, this one, and this one, okay? That's it. Or sports that were played in my high school when I was younger, for example, were this one, this one, and this one. And that's it. You can choose one of them. I will take a screenshot and I will send it to you. Voy a tomar una captura de pantalla y se lo voy a enviar para que ustedes se recuerden, if you want to remember it. Do you have any question right now about the passive voice, any other doubt, uh, any comment? Preguntas, comentarios, dudas, acerca de la plataforma? No, teacher, thank you. Okay, perfect, everything's correct. Now, uh, remember to work in the platform. If you have any questions, let me know in the WhatsApp group. Okay, and I uh, hope to see you tomorrow and have a nice night, okay? Take care. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Uh,
Good night, teacher. Sorry for the background noise. No I problem. Was outside. No <laughs> problem. Thank you. Good night. Good night.